Hi everyone, welcome to the 2016 VMworld Preview Show here on theCUBE. I'm Sam Kahane with my co-host Stu Miniman. Stu, our seventh year at VMworld, going to be a great event. Here's what we're going to cover today. First, what to expect at the event. Then we're going to look into the current state of VMware. And then we're going to take a look at the Dell EMC merger and the implications. So Stu, can you set the stage for us? Yeah, sure, Sam. As you said, it's our seventh year doing the show. Uh, we've been there since 2010. Really exciting show. It's, it's one of the top shows that we do, one of our signature events. Uh, actually, it was one of only like a handful of events that we did the first year. We're back every year, bigger than ever. Uh, we're, we've got two sets going. Uh, I've got lots of hosts, uh, lots of exciting guests, uh, and it, it's really one of those ecosystem shows. Uh, not only, of course, is it the biggest virtualization uh, event out there. Uh, people kind of joke that it's uh, Storage World uh, because it's really the, fr from a non-storage owned show. Uh, it's the biggest storage show. Of course, there's the EMC relationship there, and now the Dell relationship there, which we'll get into. Um, but uh, a lot going on at the show, you know, hundreds of uh, exhibitors there, uh, ex expecting, you know, usually in the order of magnitude, you know, 20,000 attendees or so, uh, and is back in Vegas for the first time since 2011, since Moscone in San Francisco is under construction. So, back out in the desert, which I'm there a little bit too much, but, uh, you know, happy to, it's, it's such a great community at this show, uh, really good ecosystem, and, you know, thousands of people I always look forward to seeing every year. Absolutely, and they look forward to having the cube. I feel like we've grown together. You know, we started with just one set, now we're doing two. Really excited. I want to just start by talking about big guests. Who are you hoping to have on at the show? Oh boy. So you know, first of all, you know, of course, there's there's VMware, and the the elephant in the room that we'll talk about some is Dell is buying EMC. We will see. As of you know, it's the first week of <laughs> August right now. Uh, it hasn't closed yet. We're waiting for China. By the time we get to VMworld, will it be closed? Will it be almost closed? Uh, that's going to be sorted out. Uh, so of, of course, we get the big VMware executives. Uh, you know, Pat Gelsinger, Sanjay Poonin. Uh, you know. Robin Matlock, uh, you know, the, the, the C-suite of, uh, of, of executives there. Uh, Michael Dell is going to be on the program. Always happy to have Michael on. And then a broad ecosystem, uh, you know, we talk about the storage companies, you know, EMC, HP, uh, you know, IBM. Uh, we, we always get a lot of storage companies, a lot of startups in the space. Uh, we'll also cover, you know, networking, generally virtualization, backups a hot topic, hyperconvergence, uh, and, uh, you know, kind of the cloud ecosystem, what's happening in the developer space. There's so many angles uh, that we cover, as you said, Sam, three days, two sets, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, we do usually, it's a, in the order of magnitude, you know, 60, 70 interviews, a, a just a ton of content that helps kick off our second half of the year. We just finished the, the first half of the year with our spring tour. This kicks off kind of the end of summer fall tour. Uh, lots of shows that we'll be doing, and VMware's a great way to kind of, you know, shake off the, uh, okay, we hopefully got a little bit of vacation, uh, you know, got a little bit of a tan for some of us, and, you know, join the community. No better way to kick off the second half of the year. So what's changed since last year? So uh, the big thing, of course, is you know Dell buying EMC, and that's had a little bit of a ripple. If we look at VMware, uh, there's been a number of executive changes. So uh, from an ecosystem, uh, Carl Eschenbach has really been uh, you know the the anchor stone for a lot of what's happened in the community. Uh, he's been there since you know 2010 uh, when we've been there. He's been there long before there. Uh, so Carl's gone. He went and joined a VC. We had a lot of former uh, VMware people join VCs. We had already seen you know uh, Steve Harrod. Uh, who was in the early days, uh, who will have him back on the cube, uh, you know, is, is that a VC. Martin Casado, who was the founder of Nicira, which was that billion dollar acquisition, uh, it wor works at a VC. So a number of kind of key players. So there's been some change as to who the leadership is at VMware. Uh, and we're seeing the growth of some of the key products. So uh, Sanjay Poonin's got the Andrews of Computing, uh, which was the AirWatch acquisition. Uh, Nicira in the software defined networking space has been growing. Uh, vSAN in the, the, the storage, uh, area uh, has been growing and how they partner with uh, you know the, the ecosystem and where they're just trying to get a bigger piece of the market. Uh, so the thing we've all been looking at for a number of years is how is VMware growing outside of its core vSphere marketplace. Uh, VMware is still the dominant player in vir server virtualization, uh, still have very strong market share, but uh, th there, there's definitely uh, some people threatening uh, the Microsofts of the world uh, and the, the cloud vendors, uh, you know, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all pose uh, some significant threats long term to where VMware VMware's going. Yeah, I'd love to take a quick look at, you know, VMware. Over the past year, you know, a year ago, the stock price uh, was in the 80s. 
Then around January and February, it dropped all the way down to the 40s, started climbing up 50s in January. Now it's in the 70s. Do you think, you know, it's on the way up? What do you, what do you see happening? Well, a, as we always know, uh, what the market doesn't like is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And the Dell acquisition and what that means for VMware has left people with a lot of uncertainty. Uh, for example, if you look at the cloud marketplace, uh, VMware's vCloud Air and VirtuStream, which EMC had acquired for once again, over a billion dollars. Uh, they were going to put those together to make this cloud group. Uh, the market reacted rather negatively to that, and it fell apart. So VirtuStream stays under EMC, vCloud Air. Uh, there's vCloud Air and the vCloud Air network. The vCloud Air network is doing okay. They have a number of partners, made a big announcement with IBM. They have service providers they work with. But vCloud Air as itself as a service hasn't been doing that great. We kind of wonder where it is. You know, there's been a lot of fallout from the, the, the the infrastructure vendors as to what their cloud strategy is going to be. Uh, and, and that's a big question for VMware. So uh, the market reacted as we get closer to the Dell deal closing. Uh, you see stocks almost back to where it was uh, a year ago. So I know the people inside VMware feeling a little bit better. I, I know uh, those people sitting around their desks watching stock drop into the 50s and the 40s uh, made everybody a little bit nervous. Uh, there's always concern, will there be cuts uh, as, as things uh, you know merge here? Uh, so where that happens, uh, you know, if we can get uncertainty out, uh, then I think they'll feel a little bit better about it. And once Dell owns it, VMware's still a public company with ownership by Dell rather than from EMC. So there is some change, but a lot of things will, will be told uh, is, you know, stay the course. Uh, this is how VMware's going to keep its, uh, its you know, its core business steady. Uh, this is how they're going to grow, uh, you know, the enterprise licenses. Uh, and then how are they going to expand beyond that? And they, they've got a number of good things that are happening uh, in some of the areas we talked about, like, you know, the AirWatch and vSAN and uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the networking pieces. Great, so we're not avoiding the elephant in the room. You know, we're talking about it, you know, Dell buys EMC, EMC is a majority stakeholder in VMware. Uh, anything else you want to touch on on that? So, uh, boy, it, it'd be nice if this was all tied up in a nice bow and done for VMworld. I'm sure they're going to be talking about it. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, the other thing, uh, there were some rumors that, you know, when the deal closes, Pat Gelsinger will be out. Mm. Um, What's your cause? So, Pat Gelsinger has come out and said, absolutely, positively, I'm staying. Right. Uh, that being said, you know, uh, we love having Pat on the Cube. We expect to have him <laughs> at, at, at VMworld. Uh, there's been people that have said once the transition's done and everything's set, well, maybe in 2017 uh, there will be some transition. So VMworld, expect Pat to be up on stage, given the main keynote. We'll have him on our program. Uh, we'll ask Pat, <laughs> you know, where <laughs> things are going. Uh, Pat is a very well-balanced person. He wrote a book on balancing, uh, you know, work personal life and church. Uh, when I watch Pat on Twitter, he's talking a lot about church lately. So mm -hmm. um, we could talk about church because uh, all of the Dell, EMC, VMware fallout is waiting to happen, so we can't talk publicly about it. So we'll see. Uh, you know, the, the VMware has had some choppy waters to, to, to navigate. Uh, Pat's been at the helm. Company's still doing well, uh, still in the leadership position. Great, I want to talk about big announcements. Uh, what's going to be the news at this year's event? So, you know, it's interesting. The ecosystem really, over the next couple of weeks leading up to the show, I expect, you know, there's, what, 200 vendors there, and you'll probably see 400 press releases go out because everybody lines up announcements around what's happening at VMworld. Uh, usually there's a major release of vSphere that goes out, and that has a ripple effect as to everybody saying, hey, we support that, and here's the awesome new thing that we do. Um, always looking out to see, hey, are there any interesting acquisitions happening? Um, are, are there any, uh, you know, anybody going public. Uh, you know, we, we've seen now a couple of public companies in the tech marketplace. Uh, the one that's relevant to what's going on at VMworld is Nutanix. So Nutanix has filed their S1. Uh, we expect sometime in the second half of the year Nutanix uh, to, to IPO. Uh, it's unlikely that it will happen before VMworld, but uh, Nutanix is the market leader in the hyperconverged segment. VMware has their own product. Uh, it's the Virtual SAN or vSAN. They've got a new product with uh, EMC and the VCE group. Chad Sackett leads that up. We'll have Chad on the program. Uh, we'll hear about that, that momentum. I, I know you'll hear a lot from VMware and EMC as to how they're looking to claim le leadership in that space. Uh, so you, you've got a number of vendors that are now over $100 million worth of revenue in this space. Uh, and uh, you know the next mark is like, okay, you know, race to like a billion dollars. So, you know, hyperconvergence overall, uh, our, our, our market uh, forecasts show that in 2015, 
it was in the you know ballpark of about 1.5 billion dollars for that market, which might sound like a decent amount, but when you're talking, uh, you know, that converged infrastructure had, you know, you know well over, I don't know, six to eight billion dollars. Uh, you know, it's hyperconvergence is still small, but it's growing fast. Uh, so you see all the big players uh, in the storage world, in the server world, uh, you know, quickly moving fast either to have their own products, make acquisitions, or partner. So uh, VMware, very important in that space. Got companies like Nutanix, uh, companies like SimpliVity, uh, and uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Lenovo, and Dell, all trying to position themselves, and Cisco, all trying to position themselves to be the leader uh, as this new wave uh, kind of takes more and more of the market share. Tagline for the event, the bumper sticker afterwards, what do you think people are going to say? Wow. One line. Um, so, you know, it's a question we often ask uh, on the Cube, uh, you know, it's, uh, we're looking forward to, you know, what is the, the, the course going forward for VMware uh, as part of Dell Technologies? So, uh, you know, will VMware maintain uh, enough independence and enough partnership with the ecosystem, or will the ties th that, that pull them closer together uh, to Dell and EMC cause people to say, hey, I want alternatives to this. Uh, I want to use containers more. We haven't talked about mm -hmm. Docker. Uh, yeah. I want to use OpenStack uh, and use open source, you know, KVM-based solutions. Uh, rather than, uh, th th than using VMware. Uh, and Microsoft is a big looming threat both from the cloud and from the infrastructure standpoint, so really a pincer move uh, to try to squash VMware for, from both uh, angles. So uh, I don't have a pithy tagline for you yet. <laughs> uh, by the time we get to the show, I'm sure John Furrier will have something exactly. or, or I will. And that's why people need to tune in. You know, we have, I think, the best guest list we've had yet. You know, if Michael, Pat, you know, we have the whole crew on. Where can people find theCUBE? Yeah, so, so of course, to watch theCUBE, just turn to siliconangle.tv. You'll see uh, the list of when we're broadcasting for VMworld three days, Monday through Wednesday. Um, we do have some limited availability for like end users that want to be on uh, or good people that the community want us to have on. So we always save a couple of slots in our back pocket for those. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm just Stu on Twitter. Um, also, we're going to do a pre-show crowd chat leading up to the event. If you go to crowdchat.net slash VMworld, VMworld, uh, you'll see that we're going to have a good, robust discussion as to you know what session should you see, uh, any other predictions that we'll have, what's hot, what's interesting, um, because every year there tends to be something that kind of bubbles up, uh, you know, around kind of the, not just the announcements, but you know when when something is is really starting to grow uh, into a part of the market that everybody cares about. Um, so we will see uh, when we get there. And uh, as you said, Sam, oh, I, I should mention, so mm. we're actually bringing in some guest hosts yes. this year. So we, we've got so many interviews to do. Uh, we're reaching out to the community, friends of both the Cube, uh, the, the broad community, and, and, and uh, the VMworld ecosystem knows well. Uh, so happy, a couple I can mention already. So John Troyer, uh, who's no stranger to the VMworld community. John, of course, ran the communities, started the VExpert program. Guy I've uh, been lucky to know for a bunch of years. Uh, John will help us out some. Uh, Mark Farley, uh, who has done a number of events, uh, been part of a number of companies that have been acquired by some of the big companies. Uh, he's helped us out on the queue before. Uh, he's been doing the Ridecast thing, uh, doing some cool videos riding around in cars. So I expect him to be riding around in Vegas, and he'll also <laughs> be on the Cube some. And also, uh, first-time guest host on the Cube, uh, Keith Townsend. Uh, so uh, Keith has uh, been part of Crowd Chats, part of the community. I'm sure lots of people in the virtualization audience know him well. Uh, so we're happy to have Keith on, and might have an extra a special guest or two. Uh, John Furrier and myself will be kind of the main anchors. Sam, I know you're going to be there bouncing all over the show. And uh, we, we've got a big team there, so we're looking to have tons of meetings, uh, lots of good interviews, uh, lots of good after hours uh, networking opportunities. And it's, it's definitely one of those weeks that make sure you get your sleep here in August <laughs> because once you get there, um, there's really not much time to do anything but you know, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, any last words? So uh, I, I think we covered a lot of it, Sam. A lot has changed since last year, but the thing that hasn't changed is that VMworld is one of the biggest events of the year. Uh, it's one of the things that you know everybody you know kind of goes, shows up, uh, meets with a lot of people. So uh, take advantage of the opportunities. Make sure to uh, you know engage in the community. You know, hop in. Hashtag VMworld is, is always a hashtag there on uh, for those of you still using Twitter, uh, including myself. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, lots of activity there. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing a lot of people at the show. Just so you know, millennials are all over Twitter as well. Uh, Stu, great job. Thank you for joining us today. Thank uh, we're, you, re Sam. we're really excited to come to the event, one of our favorite events of the year. 
As Stu said, follow us at siliconangle.tv. We will be in the VM Village, a great location. So again, I'm Sam Kahane. Thank you for watching theCUBE. And uh, tune in in a couple weeks for the event.